Hey everyone, welcome back again to another Flutter tutorial and in this session we will look into how to handle permissions in our Flutter app. So the permission here what we talk about is the ability to access the device specific APIs like the camera, microphone or the gallery photos etc. And to make this possible we will be using one such package available in pub.dev called the permission handlers. And you can also take a look at that. And this is going to be the package which we have been talking right now, the permission handlers which actually does the job of pricing the request whenever the Flutter app invokes any device specific API access like the camera or microphone and also at the same time this package keeps track of the permission status and you can also see that this package provides a cross platform Android and iOS API to request and check for the permissions. So this package actually comes in handy while you are dealing with uh, the process of accessing the device specific APIs in your Flutter app. Now let's head back to our VS code and try to understand this with the help of a simple example. What we have here is a running example of the same. We have used the permission handler package to access the device gallery. We have a elevator button placed right at the center and which when click it should take us to the device gallery and allow us to choose a particular photo. Consider we have opened the app for the very first time and if I try to click this button, it raises the request whether to approve or deny the request for the particular API which is the photo in this case. You can either go for approving the request or you can also deny the request. If you go for approving the request, the process is going to be linear, nothing is going to change. Rather, consider if you try to deny the request where we click this don't allow button. Now we have denied the request either knowingly or unknowingly and if we try to click this button again, we will no longer see the request to revoke the permission or to change the permissions. Rather, with the help of the permission handlers, we will be able to keep track of the status and since we are using this package in our Flutter app, we try to provide the user with the relevant information of the permission status that the permission has been denied for the photo or the gallery. And this is done possible with the help of the package permission handlers. Just with the help of the status, we will be able to enter this alert box and educate the user about the permission status. Where the user can go directly to the system settings and revoke the permission or change the permission manually. In this case, the permission is being denied. Let's change it to all photos and head back to our Flutter app. And this time, if I try to click this button, you will no longer see that alert box. Rather, it takes us directly to the device gallery and allows us to choose the photo since the permission has been granted. So this is where the usage of the package comes in. It keeps track of the permission status, either it is approved or denied, based upon which we can re-render the UI accordingly, either to ask for a permission again or to go with the flow of the app itself. Hope you got a better understanding of how to make use of the permission handlers to process the requests and keep track of the permission status in your Flutter app. With this idea and without any further delay, let's directly jump into the coding part and start implementing this feature in our Flutter app. First let's try to add two dependencies in our perspec and the dependencies are the image picker and the permission handler. The image picker is the package that helps us to open the device gallery and choose the photo and the permission handler is what we have been talking earlier. Alright, so make sure you add these two dependencies in your perspec and after adding these two dependencies let's head over to the main.dat file. Here in the main.dat file the home points to my home page. The my homepage is nothing but a stateless widget class with an empty scaffold. First let's start by building up the UIs. Let's create an app bar. Right? So this app bar is nothing but a custom defined function which is written down separately inside the components folder. Here inside the components we have the app bar defined which is going to be a generic app bar. So we just need to pass the title and few other optional parameters and the rendering will be done according. So we will make use of this build app bar widget which is a user defined function and after the app bar let's start with the body where inside the body we have a primary button which is an elevated button technically just the same way this primary button is nothing but a custom defined function that internally renders the elevated button widget okay so we make use of this primary button which is written down and say the same components folder just like the app bar okay and the button function is going to be the get from gallery that we will define shortly. Second parameter is going to be the button text. Now let's try to define this get from gallery method. Here this get from gallery method is where we will be writing the logic for opening the device gallery and try to pick a photo. So let's make use of the image picker and make use of the method pick image. 
Now we have written down the code for picking the image from the gallery. We haven't made use of the permission handler here. So let's try running this app and see how it works. Since I am opening the app for the first time, it asks for allowing or denying the request. If I click allow, the flow is going to be sequential, no exception is going to happen. But consider I click this don't allow, that is I deny the request. You see that a platform exception has occurred. In order to handle this exception, we need to wrap this code inside the try catch block. And inside the catch block, let's try to just print the exception. And if I refresh this app, you no longer get the permission request again. It is a one time process. So let's delete this app and try to rerun the entire project once again. Here, the only change is that we have wrapped this code inside the try catch block. And if I click this and try to deny the request, you will no longer see the exception. Rather, you will be able to see the exception here in the debug console. This is one decent way of handling the exceptions while dealing with the permissions. But this is not something which we are about to discuss here. So, so let's get rid of that. And here inside the catch block, which means that the permission has been denied. So this catch block gets executed only if there is an exception happening here during the process of granting or denying the request. Considering the possibility of denying the request, this catch block gets executed. Right? Therefore, inside this catch block, Let's make use of the permission status. With the help of the permission handler, we will be able to check for the status of the permission. Here in this case, we use the photos. You can also check for the camera or the microphone, etc. Thanks to the permission handler package that helps us keep track of the status. And based upon the status, if it is denied, if the status is denied, we try to show a alert dialog or else we try simply try to print the exception here. And let's now try to define this show alert dialog. This show alert dialog is going to be a Cupertino dialog and inside which we try to define the title as permission denied. Since the status is denied, we try to provide the user with the relevant information of the same. And we try to have two Cupertino action dialog. One is going to be the cancel button and the second is going to be the settings button which will in turn take us to the system settings to do the process of changing the permission manually. Whenever the cancel button is pressed, we are not going to do anything, just we will try to close the alert dialog. Here inside the settings, whenever the button is pressed, we try to make use of the open app settings method, which we get as a result of the permission handler package. Okay, so this open app settings will take us directly to the system settings and do the process of revoking or either changing the permission based upon the user choice. So let's refresh this app. So consider that we have denied the request for the first time and try to click this button the second time. We try to get this show dialog based upon the status. Since there is an exception occurring here as the permission has been denied for opening the device gallery, this catch block get executed. And here inside the catch block, as the permission is denied, we try to show the alert dialog. This alert dialog is going to have two options, either to cancel or open the system settings to do the manually. Let's go to the system settings that will take us directly to the particular flutter app setting. And here you see that since we have denied the request, we have no access to any of the photos. Let's click this and change it to all photos and now let's move back to our Flutter app and let's try to click this button again. This time we will no longer see the alert dialog as the permission has been granted. So this is how it works the same way for the camera, microphone and all other device specific APIs. Therefore with the help of these permission handlers we are able to keep track of the request and also educate the user about the permission statuses and render the UI components accordingly thereby making your app more intuitive for the users. Hope you guys found this tutorial useful. If you do so consider subscribing and I will see you in the next video.